Hey everyone, how's it going? There's one thing I live strongly by uh, in RuneScape, and that is always do your herb runs. And in this video, I'm going to show you guys what my typical herb run looks like, as well as my typical uh, inventory setup and gear setup when I do my herb runs. And before I show you all that, I'm just going to cover some really recommended uh, quests that you complete, as well as items that you obtain in order to really maximize your farming uh, gains. Uh, so to start, I'm going to list quests. Uh, first one being Fairy Tale One, which will re uh, give you re the reward of magic sector secateurs. Uh, the magic secateurs, when equipped and are harvesting your herbs, will increase uh, your yield of herbs by up to 10%. Fairy Tale Two, uh, and with Fairy Tale Two, you'll be granted access to the Fairy Ring network, and Keep in mind, you only need to start the quest. Uh, you don't actually need the stats required to complete the quest. You don't even need to complete the quest. Just simply start it, and you'll get you'll have the access gained. Next is My Arms Big Adventure, which will give you access to the Disease Free Patch in Trollheim. Uh, making friends with My Arm, which will give you disease, the access to the Disease Free Patch in Weiss, and then Ghosts Ahoy, which will give you uh, Ectophile, which is a great teleportation method for efficient herb runs. Uh, also note that there are uh, four quests that you can do that will uh, get you some really good early level farming XP uh, if you if you want, which I do recommend if you're just starting farming. Uh, the first one being Fairy Tale One, then Forgettable Tale of a Drunken Dwarf, Garden of Tranquility, and then My Arms Big Adventure. Completion of all those quests will net you around 18,500 farming experience. Uh, and, or in other words, uh, completion of those will get you from level 1 to 33 farming. Now the recommended items. You're going to definitely want to use compost on your uh, patches. Um, using compost on your patches will, in the end, grant you a bigger yield on herbs. Um, and definitely just use the best compost available to you. Like I use Ultra Compost. If you can't afford that, then just use Super and so on and so on. Um, also, Magic Secateurs, as I mentioned earlier. The Ectophile. Um, Explorer's Ring 2 or better. Our Dome Cloak 2 or better. Uh, the Skills Necklace. And if you use the, uh, the Fishing Guide Teleport, it's a quick way to run over to the Ardone or Patch. Xerix Talisman, and with the Xerix Talisman, you can use uh, the Xerix Glade option, which teleports you close to the Karend herb patch. And then lastly, for your uh, gear, you can either choose between uh, the Farmer's Outfit or Weight Reducing Gear. Now, I always choose the Weight Reducing Gear, but the choice is really yours. Um, and yeah, with that being said, now I'm going to go ahead and show you guys what my, per what my gear and inventory set up looks like. So as I said, I always use the grace, uh, the weight reducing gear, and for me that's graceful. If you don't have graceful, the other options are, uh, where are they at? Uh, boots of lightness, as well as the spotier cape. But I definitely recommend just trying to grind out the graceful gear. Uh, it's just got very good uh, weight reducing benefits. So gear, then I have my Explorer's Ring and our Dome Cloak. I have uh, the number four versions of both. These both give me unlimited teleports to the respective areas. Um, if you have the our Explorer's Ring uh, two or three, same with the Ardone Cloak two or three, then your teleports are limited. So just keep that in mind. And then the Magic Secateurs. And this is what my gear looks like for my typical... Uh, herb run than my inventory setup. Now this is going to be, uh, this can vary from person to person. Really it just depends on, you know, your stats as well as your quests and achievements that you have done. So this might not look the, the same for you, um, but I'm going to try my best to also mention a few alternatives uh, just because I'm keeping in mind that, you know, not everybody's going to have the same access. Um, now, as you can see, I have all these ruins as well as my battle staff. The reason for this is because 
in my current state with my magic level uh, and my farming level, uh, I highly always use the uh, lunar spell books. There's a lot of good farming related spells in, in lunar spell books. I'm not really going to get too much into that because that's for some more kind of advanced higher level uh, farming. And I just want to keep this as basic as possible. Um, so just don't pay much attention. If you do have questions regarding more of this, then, uh, you know, leave a comment. And if I notice that a lot of people are curious about this, then I'll even make a more advanced farming guide uh, video. But as I said, I'm just going to try and, uh, you know, keep this somewhat basic. So I always, with the recent addition of um, the farming guild, I now always start my farming, uh, my farm runs right here in the farming guild. To access this patch, you're going to need, um, what was it, 65 farming. And my plant is currently diseased. This is kind of nice because I can show you guys an example uh, of how to go about curing this. So there's two different ways. For me personally, I use my lunar spell book. I use the spell cure plant, and it'll just cure the plant for you. If you don't have access to that, then you can use these uh, plant cure potions. You can buy them from different farming NPCs. I believe there's one girl over here who should sell it. I can't remember her name though, but yeah, those are your options. You can also get the plant cures from uh, the Grand Exchange. And for me, I'm going to use the spell. So there we go. Cool little animation. And there you can see it's not cured any, or it's not diseased anymore. I've cured it. So perfect. Now I'm going to head over to the next patch, which is um, Harmony Island. This is, in order to access Harmony Island, or in order to use the patch at Har Harmony Island, you're going to need to have the completion of the Elite Mauritania Diary. Now there are some pretty heavy requirements for this completion, so again, you may not be able to access this patch. And if not, you can just skip past this patch, uh, no big deal. The next patch is Weiss. As I mentioned, there is a quest requirement for uh, using Weiss. And also, you need to light this fire, or you need to construct the fire of nourishment. Um, I don't remember exactly all the things that you use to construct this, but um, if it's not constructed uh, and you go and click on it, it'll tell you exactly what you need to construct it. Um, and then you'll be able to use this patch. Without this being lit, you can't use this patch. So keep that in mind. After that, I teleport to house and I head on over to the uh, Trollheim patch. And again, um, if you don't have a portal nexus or you don't have portal rooms, you can use the Trollheim, you can convert a house, teleport to house tab into a Trollheim teleport tab. Um, like I said, there's lots of alternate methods, and uh, you know if you're curious about them, you can just do a simple Google search, and uh, you can see just how many alternate methods there are. So that way, you know you can scale to whatever it is that you, whatever kind of current situation you're in. So as you can see, right here is where the uh, this patch is in Trollheim. Next, I go to the uh, Corrend patch. In order to do that, as I said earlier, use the Xerix Talisman and use the Glade option. I have mine mounted in my house. Then you just run over slightly uh, e more east, southeast, but uh, yeah, more eastern. Then you'll see the farming icon pop up. And right over there is your Corrend patch. So perfect with that. After that, I head on over to the Ardon farm with my uh, cloak. And right here, it takes you right here. And if you don't have this as an option, uh, you can use the Ardon teleport tab or the Ardon teleport within your portal room in your house. Um, or the skills necklace, as I mentioned earlier. Again, tons of alternate options that you can use um, if you don't have access to everything that I do. Um, then, if you pull this up, you'll see the ectofile takes us to Port Fasmatis, and if you run all the way over 
to the west, which I'll show you. Uh, the farming patch is right over there. And I'll run over there just so you guys can get a good look. Another thing I should mention is that when you're harvesting the, and I think I did mention earlier, but when harvesting the herbs, make sure you have the magic sectors uh, sectors equipped, or you will not get the 10% increase in yield. So right here is the next one at Port Fasmatis. And after that, I head on over to uh, Falador, the Falador patch. And if you open up the map, you can see it's kind of between Falador and uh, Port Sarum. Drainer Village is over there. And then the patch is right here. Using the ring will teleport you. You see there's a little icon. It'll teleport you right in the cabbage patch, just south of the farming area. And then these ones are already done but I'll just come back and pick them later just in order to keep this video slightly shorter. And with that, we head on over to the very last uh, patch, which is the uh, Catherby patch. Now on the portal nexus, that is um, all the way at the bottom or L for a shortcut. Um, if you don't have this, then, you know, maybe have the Catherby uh, portal in your portal room. If you don't have that, then you can use the Camelot uh, teleport tab. So I'm just going to go ahead and use my Nexus. Then you just run up north. Very close is the farming area. And we have the patch right here. Another quick thing that I need to note is uh, for you guys is that when you're picking your, when you're harvesting your herbs, um, if your inventory becomes full, you can simply right click on the herb, click use, and use it on the tool leprechaun. And he will actually note your herbs for you. And this the same can be done with your watermelons, like whatever you have in your allotments or any type of flowers. Uh, he can note them for you, which is really convenient. Um, and as you might have noticed earlier, he can store everything. So I always keep my compost stored. Don't forget to use your compost on the patch. Uh, before planting your seed to get that extra benefit of the compost. And um, that should be everything that you guys need to know about um, efficient herb runs, all the recommended quests, all the recommended items. Um, this is, and again, th that was just the order in which I do my uh, patches, you know, um, and I... I strongly recommend you guys follow the same um, the same route. Uh, you know, you can mix it up if you like. I've just found that this is the most efficient for me, and uh, the same route can be applied. And you know, if you if there are some patches that you can't use that I used, just just cut those out and still use the same route, just minus the um, the patches that you can't use. And one more thing I wanted to note. Um, the seeds that you use are going to be dependent on two things. One, if you want to get more profit out of your runs, or if you want to get more experience. If you want to get more experience, it's really simple. You just use, obviously, the um, the seeds that are best, that are the highest level for you. I'm using torsals. Those are the highest level. Um, I'm getting the most experience out of it. Now, if you want to get uh, GP out of it, then you can simply go ahead and um, do some quick math to figure it out. So as you can see down here, um, for me, my torso seeds, one is 77K rounded up. And, you know, I do, so 77,000. And I do nine patches, nine seeds per run. So we're going to times that by nine. So 693K is what it costs for my run. So I'm going to write that down here, 693K. And here, actually, how about I do this? So 693K seeds. Then, as you can see, for the grimy torso, which is what I get for harvesting the seed, one of those is 9.1K. On average, uh, per seed, I get 10 herbs. So let's just say 10 herbs, right? Per seed, I do nine seeds, so 10 times nine, 90. 
and then times the, the cost of one is 9.1k. So like that. So 819,000. So that's what I get. So subtract the amount of the seed cost from this. So 693k. So 126k total profit per run is what I get on my seeds. Um, that's a great way to kind of see um, how much profit you're going to make per run based on average. And if you don't know what the average herbs you, that you're going to get, because it will depend on if you have the sectors, what kind of compost you use. It will also depend on your uh, farming level. If you don't know what kind of average you're going to hit, you can simply Google it. There's a lot of information already stored on RS Wiki that will tell you the general averages uh, based on level and using uh, certain composts and sectors. But yeah, I hope this guide was helpful for some of you. Um, you know, if you didn't know a lot about farming beforehand, hopefully this can give you some insight on which, uh, you know, on everything that you can use and how to get to certain places and, you know, complete the quests, get the items and uh, don't skip out on your herbs because it's, it's very easy to do and really easy profit. Uh, good luck on your farming gains. And I hope this, again, I hope this is helpful for you guys. And I'll see you in the next video. Have a nice day.